the main focus of bacon's essay rests on explaining to the reader the importance of steady knowledge in terms of its practical application towards the individual and its society bacon through a syllogistic tripartite statement begins this argument to validate the usefulness and advantage of study in our life bacon has the power of compressing into a few words a great body of thought Thus, he puts forward the three basic purposes of studies. Caught studies serve for delight, for ornament, and for ability. Uncaught. He later expands his sentence to bring lucidity and clearness. Studies fill us with delight and aesthetic pleasure when we remain private and solitary. While we discourse, our studies add decoration to our speech. Further, the men of study can decide best on the right lines in business and politics. Bacon deprecates too much studies and the scholar's habit to make his judgment from his reading instead of using his independent views. Bacon is a consummate artist of Renaissance spirit. Thus, he knows the expanse of knowledge and utility of studies. He advocates a scientific inquiry of studies. Through an exquisite metaphor drawn from botany, he compares human mind to a growing plant. As the growing plants need to be pruned and watered and manured for optimum development, the new growing consciousness of us are to be tutored, mounted, oriented and devised by studies. But it is experience which ultimately matures our perception and leads us to perfection. Caught. They perfect nature and are perfected by experience for natural abilities are like natural plants that need pruning by study." Unquote. Next, Bacon considers what persons despise studies and what people praise them and what people make practical use of them. The crafty men condemn studies, simple men admire them while the wise men make ultimate use of them. But it should be remembered that the inquisitive mind and keen observation cultivate the real wisdom. Bacon advises his readers to apply studies to weigh and consider rather than useless contradictions and grandiloquence. In The Advancement of Learning, Bacon makes systematic classifications of studies and considers different modes to be employed with different kinds of books. Caught, some books are to be tasted, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested." Uncaught. The books according to its value and utility are to be devised in various modes of articulations. The worthy classical pragmatic sort are to be adorned by expertise reading with diligence while the meaner sort of books or less important books are to be read in summary or by deputy. Again, the global span of knowledge is revealed in his analysis of various subjects and their beneficent categories. The scholarly mind of Bacon here makes the subtle observation, caught, Histories make men wise, poets witty, and mathematics subtle, natural philosophy deep, moral grave, logic and rhetoric able to content." Unquote. Studies do not shape a perfect man without the needed conference and writing. Quote. And therefore, if a man write little, he had need have a great memory. If he confer little, he had need have much cunning, to seem to know that he doth not." Uncaught. Bacon further tells us that our studies pass into our character. Rightly so, the constitution of our moral disposition is the outcome of our learning and experience. Every defect of the mind, Bacon says, may be cured by a proper choice of reading. Bacon here draws a parallel between the physical exercise and intellectual exercise. As different games, sports, 
exercises beget growth and development the different branches of studies cures the incapability of logic wandering of wit lack of distinguish etc bacon emphatically concludes that every defect of the mind may have a special receipt and remedial assurance his first analysis is an exposition on the purposes or uses that different individuals can have by approaching study caught for delight ornament and for ability uncaught and how certain professions are better served by individuals with steady knowledge as he mentions the virtues of study he also points out its vices caught to spend too much time in study is sloth uncaught also how study influences our understanding of nature and in opposition how our experience of nature bounds our acquired knowledge after that the author presents the concept of how different individuals with different mental abilities and interests in life approach the idea of studying caught crafty men condemn studies uncaught and offers advice on how study should be applied caught but to wait and consider uncaught then bacon goes into expressing his ideas in how the means to acquire study knowledge books can be categorized and read according to their content and value to the individual the benefits of studying are bacon's final approach benefits in terms of defining a man by its ability to read right or confer and in terms of being the medicine for any caught and in terms of being the medicine for any impediment in the wit and by giving receipts to every defect of the mind certainly some of francis bacon's insights in this subject are of value after 400 years of societal evolution we can ascertain this when we read the phrase caught they perfect nature and are perfected by experience uncaught nevertheless some of the concepts expressed in his essay have to be understood through the glass of time by this i mean society values and concepts were different altogether to what we know today at that time society was strongly influenced by the idea of literacy and illiteracy only educated people had access to knowledge and by that to societal status and opportunity nowadays it would be difficult to accept ideas which relate skills or professions towards an attitude to approach studying today a skilled machinist or carpenter can certainly be a studied person nowadays most people in our society have the possibility to read and by that to obtain knowledge independently of what our personal choices are in terms of profession also we must consider how today we value the specialization of knowledge which in the past characterized by a more genreic and limited access to knowledge was a major factor in the conceptualization and understanding of study knowledge as to the extent we see it today finally it is doubtful that the benefits of studying can be approached as a recipe for any intellectual illness we know now that the real illness are related to mental conditions and not necessarily to our mental skills abilities or lack of them and by that i mean that bacon solutions to those conditions are substantially naive under the actual understanding of human psychology concepts and ideas evolve at the same time as the human condition changes in all social scientific political and economic aspects by looking through the glass of time and comparing the past to the present we come to the realization of the universality and endurance of some concepts and the fragility and impermanence of some others.